Guys, you can also join us in Facebook and also in WhatsApp. So if you have any doubts regarding any topic, you can ask me over there. So the link will be given in the description box. And for clear notes on my topics, please you can check my link www.biomedhistory.com and the link will be given in the description box. Hi friends, my name is Fanendra Gupta. So in this video, let us discuss about trichinosis. So trichinosis is a disease which is mainly caused by a parasite known as roundworm. And roundworm, it is a common name. And the scientific name of roundworm is Trichinella spiralis. So this roundworm comes under the classification of nematode. It's com it comes under the classification of nematode. And the disease, there is nothing but the disease which is mainly caused by the roundworm is known as trichinosis. And in this video, I am going to explain to you about the life cycle, structure, symptoms and diagnosis treatment which is given for the person who is infected with this type of disease known as trichinosis and this trichinosis disease was discovered by a scientist known as Joseph Melik Lady so now let us see the structure of roundworm and structure of the roundworm it is differentiated into both male worm as well as the female worm that is nothing but it is bisexual so now let us see the structure of male worm as well as the female worm so coming into the structure, I have said you that it is bisexual, that is nothing but it consists of male roundworm as well as female roundworm. So this is the male roundworm and this is the female roundworm, okay? So coming into the male roundworm and if you see the, what is the main difference between male roundworm as well as the female roundworm, male roundworm consists of testes but female roundworm it consists of ovaries, right? So this part is known as testes, I have written here and this part is known as ovary, right? See if you see here and right. Uh, so in the male roundworm, in the, in the part of the testes, it, 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 there is a presence of sperm duct. So if you see here, this is a sperm duct. So in the sperm duct, what happens is the formation of sperm takes place. But whereas if you see in the case of female roundworm, if you see in the ovaries, so within the ovary, formation of eggs takes place. And the eggs which are mainly formed in that ovary will be sent to the uterus. Below I have written here uterus, right? So this is the part of uterus. And if you see the uterus part, there are eggs which has been laid over in the uterus and from the uterus it comes out through the anus okay so let us see the structure of the male roundworm as well as the female roundworm and in the case of male roundworm the diameter is 2 to 4 millimeters but if you see in the case of length 15 to 17 centimeters and the posterior end is curved if you see here in the posterior end it is curved but if you see in the case of female roundworm it the diameter is 3 to 6 millimeter and the length is 20 to 25 centimeters and the posterior end is straight and pointed right if you see this is a part of anus i have forgot to write there if you see here this is a part of the anus and in the part of the anus it has pointed end so the posterior end of female roundworm is straight posterior pointed end so now let us see the life cycle so now let us discuss about the life cycle so normally Life cycle can be seen in pigs, rats and rodents and also in the humans. So first I will explain you the life cycle in humans and then after the completion of the life cycle in these humans then I will explain you about the life cycle which can be seen in pigs also. So firstly the life cycle of these humans will be begins with infected beef. So this is the infected beef right and within this infected beef it, in, what is the meaning of this infected? Infected means it consists of trichinella cysts right. It consists of the cysts of trichinella and this not only the beef if you take for example if you take pork so this pork and beef will be intake by the humans will be ingested into the humans and from the mouth this infected beef from the mouth it enters into the stomach we all know that stomach consists of gastric juices pepsins so this pepsin and gastric juices are very much powerful right which are mainly present in the stomach so with the stomach, what happens? The larvae are released out. See there, I have written there. Larvae are released out within the stomach due to that exposure of due to the exposure with gastric juices and pepsin. The cyst, sorry, the cyst will be burst out, and the larva from that cyst will be comes out, right? So firstly, the infected beef or the pork will be intake by the human, and from the mouth it enters into the stomach. Within the stomach, there are many gastric juices and pepsin. Are present in the stomach so due to the exposure of the gastric juices and pepsin the cyst will be break down and the releasing of larva takes place within the stomach itself and from the stomach it enters the larvae the larvae will enter into the bowel mucosa it enters into the bowel mucosa so 
within the bowel mucosa it enters within two weeks it enters into the two weeks so what is the lifespan of this larvae the lifespan of the larvae will be six weeks six weeks okay so within the two weeks this larvae which is present in this bowel mucosa will get into adult worm will transform into adult worm within two weeks okay so within two weeks the larva which is mainly present in this bowel mucosa will get into the adult stage will transform into the adult stage so adult worm adult stage is nothing but where it has a capacity to undergo copulation 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 is nothing but mating right so interaction is not, that is nothing but interaction between male and female so if you see here copulation takes place this is copulation so male and female worm undergoes copulation and mainly releases larvae many larvae okay up to 1500 larvae will be released by the female worm female releases larvae how many larvae 1500 larvae will be released and this copulation when this copulation takes place when this worm gets a transform into adult worm so within one week itself the both male worm and female worm undergoes copulation that is nothing but the sperms which are mainly present in the testes will enter into the ovaries of the female worm in such a way the copulation takes place so due to the copulation the larvae will be released by the female worm okay and right after the copulation the larvae will be released right and that larvae will enter into the striated muscles will enter into the striated muscles so encystment takes place within the striated muscles encystment takes place in the striated muscles so what is the lifespan of that encystment the lifespan of that encystment will be 4 to 5 weeks so within the 4 to 5 weeks the larva which, is, which enters into the striated muscles undergoes encystation so after the process of the encystation the larvae will transform into encystered larvae the larvae will be transformed into encystered larvae after the process of encystation and what what is the duration of that encystation encystation is 4 to 5 weeks okay within 4 to 5 weeks it it, it enters into the stage of encystered larvae and that encystered larvae will enter into the rats or else rodents rodents are nothing but it is animals we consist of for example if you take mammals okay comes under the rodents and this rats and rodents will be consumed by the pigs and this and in the pigs also the life cycle of this trichinella happens and the pigs will be again consumed by these humans okay in the form of beef or else in the form of pork so now let us discuss about the life cycle in pigs so now let us discuss about the life cycle in pigs so this is a pig and pigs consist of parts like intestine, small intestine, right? So normally the striated muscles which was affected within the men, within which was affected in the humans will be consumed by the pig, right? And then the striated muscle consists of cyst, right? And the cyst will enter into the pig. And finally from the mouth of the pig, it enters into the small intestine. So this is the small intestine. So within the small intestine, what happens? The larvae which is present in the small intestine undergoes copulation. Both male larvae as well as the female larvae undergoes copulation. So what is meant by copulation? Copulation is nothing but interaction between male worm as well as the female worm. So that is nothing but the sperms which are mainly released by the testes will enter into the female worm within the ovary. Then the formation of egg takes place and the cyst which is mainly released will enter into the bloodstream. So this is the bloodstream, right? Normally the larvae will be released by the female worm after copulation and that larvae will enter into the bloodstream so this is the bloodstream so after in this bloodstream only encystment process takes place encystment process takes place encystment process is nothing but the larvae stage which is in the larvae stage will enter into the encystered larva in the in the, will enter into the stage of encystered larva so which uh, so larvae which is in the normal larvae which is in a small stage will enter into the matured stage that is nothing but it enters into the next stage of encystal larva by the process known as encystment and then the pig dies and then the pig dies so when this pig dies the pig will be intake the pig will be eaten by this man by the humans right and then the life cycle of humans takes place where i have explained you before right and within the life cycle what I have explained finally what happens the striated muscle will be affected and that affected striated muscle will be consumed by the pig again and again the small intestine within the small intestine again the copulation of male worm as well as the female worm takes place within the pig and after the small, after the small intestine it enters into the 
blood stream within the pig which one larva will enter into the blood stream newly born larvae okay and then within the blood stream encystment process takes place and after the encystment process takes place the pig again gets die okay after the after the death of the pig the pig will be again consumed by the man and again the life cycle of process life cycle process of the man will be takes place which i have explained to you before and then it, it will be again consumed by the pigs the striated muscles which was affected within the humans in the life cycle which i have explained to you about before will enter into the again the pig and total life cycle process takes place within the pig and also in the humans so normally in the i have forgot to say you one point in the in in the life cycle in the life cycle of human that is nothing but uh, normally in some cases migration of the you know this larvae migration of that larvae will enters into some other tissues but in the life cycle what i have explained you about it enters into the striated muscles so not only in the striated muscles it enters into the some other tissues that is nothing but it enters into some other organs also but it can be seen in the rare cases in some cases only we can see that but in the most of the cases the larvae will enter into the striated muscles itself so when this enters into the other tissues which one this larvae will enter into the other organs or other tissues then what happens encephalitis process takes encephalitis, encephalitis disease takes place encephalitis is nothing but uh, it is a disease which can be affected with the brain inflammation of the brain takes place inflammation of the brain takes place when it when, when when this disease occurs when this larvae enter into the other tissues except striated muscles so when this enter into the striated muscles then the life cycle will be again begins so this is about the life cycle within the pig as well as the humans so now let us discuss about the symptoms for the person who is infected with this type of disease called as trichinosis so now let us discuss about the trichinosis symptoms for the person who is infected with this type of disease known as trichinosis and normally the first symptom is traumatic damage in intestine that is nothing but you will feel pain or else you will feel disturb in, in within the intestine uh, the sensation like you you can't able to eat properly and second one is nausea and this nausea is nothing but uh, feeling sens sensation feeling of like getting vomitings okay and third one is vomitings fourth one is diarrhea so diarrhea and fifth one is sweating and sixth one is weak pulse and seventh one is bp that is other blood pressure eighth one is heart damage ninth one is muscular pain difficult breath nervous disorders and coming yeah nervous disorders are nothing but ataxia paralysis sclerosis dysautonomia carpal tunnel syndrome and etc there are many nervous disorders which can be seen in the person who is infected with this type of disease and 12th one is kidney malfunction that is nothing but stones occurs in the kidney so or else uh, there is slightly damage within the kidneys itself no proper purine purining of water takes place within the kidneys and 13th one is fainting where you feel unconsciousness and come into the fourth one dizziness dizziness is nothing but feeling ill so now let us see the diagnosis so now let us discuss about the diagnosis and treatment for the person who is infected by this type of disease known as trichinosis so first one is detection of antibodies so normally antibodies there are several types of antibodies like igg iga igm ige and igd so this type of disease can be affected only in the type of antibody like igg igg so detection of this igg antibody takes place within that by this is one of the diagnostic test and second one is elisa test ifa test blood test and muscle biopsy so blood test is nothing but when you consult a doctor he will take a blood samples he will take our blood samples that is nothing but who is infected with this type of disease he will take his blood samples and he will keep that blood under the microscope and he will check that whether the there is a presence of this larvae or not okay which larvae trichinella larvae whether there is a presence of trichinella larvae within the blood or not he will check that is nothing but there is a blood test and coming to the muscle biopsy when you consult a doctor he will take a part of little bit part of our muscle from the body and he will keep that muscle under the presence of microscope and from the microscope he will check that whether there is a presence of this larvae or not within the muscle that is nothing but muscle biopsy come into the treatment first one is albendazole mebendazole corticosteroids and pain relievers corticosteroids when you consult a doctor normally this trichinosis disease can be seen in the allergic reactions case also so when this allergic reactions takes place then 
he will then the doctor will consult us to consume corticosteroids okay and he will also give pain reverse also so this is about the structure life cycle as well as the diagnosis treatment and the symptoms of the person who is infected with this type of disease known as trichinosis so thank you for watching this video guys if you like this video please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video please comment in the comment box i will clarify your doubts immediately thank you